everyone it is Danny and welcome to this update video I really hope that you're doing good today and we'll be focusing on what's happening in the Atlantic Basin so there is a new frontal system which is exiting the US we can see all that activity also extended into Canada the tail of the front is in the Caribbean and we can see those thunderstorms popping up this morning and then there is an airflow pressure loitering well offshore in the Caribbean islands and Bermuda. And we can see all of that associated convection with it. And then down to Northern South America, there is a bit of activity here and there as well. As we zoom into the region, there you have a closer look at all this activity. So those white dots you're seeing are indicative of lightning strikes. So lots of thunderstorms offshore in the Gulf and also uh, developing in parts of the northwestern Caribbean and parts of northern Honduras. So as we're going to be heading through today, we could see more of this activity and increased rainfall in parts of Central America. And they definitely need it because it's been really hot and dry as of lately. So having a break from that would prove to be beneficial to the residents. And so as we take a look at the rainfall forecast from Euro here, we can see it. So some additional Heavy rain is going to be possible across parts of South Florida, even in some spots in Western Cuba and parts of Central America, maybe for parts of Southern Belize, the Keys, the Bay Islands of Honduras and parts of Honduras itself, maybe some spots in Guatemala and Mexico, and then some showers may look around in Salvador, going to Nicaragua, Costa Rica and Panama. So it's getting a bit more colorful than we've seen in the past couple of days. And then for South America, it remains active. Colombia, Venezuela, parts of Venezuela that is, through the Guyanas. There could be some substantial rain in some of these areas. ABC Islands, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Central and Eastern Cuba, going to the Central and uh, Southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, most of Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Northern Leeward Islands, especially Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bartholomew, likely to be on the drier side today. And that also includes San Andreas and Providencia, offshore Nicaragua right there. So it's likely to be on the drier side. So yes, that frontal system is moving by and eventually it could bring some additional rain further into the Caribbean. But for right now, for today, it is likely to be a pretty sunny day across most of these areas. But for the, uh, the rest of the Lesser Antilles, there may be a few showers passing by, potentially for Southern Hispaniola as well. But for the most part, it should be uh, a pretty dry day across the region. As we look at the wind forecast, here we are seeing the shades of purples, blues, so going up to around 20, 25 knots in those wind speeds. And as that front moves down, winds are definitely going to be increasing in the northwestern Caribbean. It's already quite active in the vicinity of the Gulf, so that is going to be uh, spreading to the Caribbean. And uh, even for the Bahamas, it's a little bit windy as well, same story for Florida. And for the rest of the region, though, it's not going to be that windy, maybe a bit breezy here and there, but... Those very strong wind gusts are not expected as they're going to be heading through today. As it relates to the wave height, so it may be a little bit active offshore the east coast of the Dominican Republic, northern Puerto Rico, uh, because we're seeing those green shaded, so that is indicating seas up to around 6 feet offshore. So it could be a bit more active in those areas and also in the Gulf. Again, those winds are kicking up, so we find that there's a bit more wave action in the area. As we're going to be heading into tomorrow morning with that front moving further offshore, it's going to be pretty active for the Bahamas and Bermuda out there. Some of those wave heights up to around 8 feet. And also in the northwestern Caribbean, we're seeing those green shadings popping up. But elsewhere, anywhere from 0 to maybe 3, 4 feet at maximum in the region. And this is a look at the surface chart. There we can see the symbol for that cold front to that low pressure area of South Carolina. And we see that other system from earlier in the week, that's low pressure area loitering offshore and the associated front with it. Now, it is definitely not something common to see fronts uh, stretching into the Caribbean at this time of the year. But it was an El Nino winter where there would be those uh, storm systems developing further south in the U.S., which would allow a greater chance of Caribbean impacts. And we definitely saw that early this year. We saw it in December, also in January and February. But usually as we head into late March, April, there isn't as much frontal activity in the Caribbean. But there are still these ones loitering around and we will see less and less of this as time goes by. And eventually the dominator of the story in terms of rainfall and any significant activity is going to be those tropical waves. 
add any potential cyclones. So that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys in this update video and also on my second channel, Weather Extras, I have a new video hopefully to be published by the or before the end of this week. I am currently working on it. Uh, I have the link to my most recent video talking about La Nina, breaking down everything you should know. I have that link pinned in the comments, but you can subscribe to the channel so that uh, you know when I post that next video and tap the bell so you get notified. So I really do hope that you found this update to be quite informative. And if you have any questions, do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.